Looking to dig into the ominous, dramatic, and sparkling overture to Mozart's Don Giovanni? That's exactly what we'll do in this video. Hi, I'm Giovanni Grillo, I'm a conductor and a composer, and welcome to this new episode of Conducting Pills, a series where we look into a classical piece or a part of it and outline its structure and phrasing, orchestration, and harmony, with the bonus technical tips for conductors. I want to take a second to thank all of my patrons and to remind you that on my Patreon page you can find full episodes of Conducting Pills and the extra episodes tackling technical aspects on top of the live sessions and many other patrons' books. And now, let's begin! When it comes to Mozart, we enter a different world, full of surprises and dominated by the unexpected that seemed to flow so naturally out of his mind. Way ahead of his own time, his operas are a marvel in the subtle depictions of the characters. But most of all, his characters are humans with all their ups and downs, strengths and weaknesses that we can all recognize ourselves into. This opera, Don Giovanni, is labeled as a drama giocoso, which means a playful drama, a mix of serious and comical. And this aspect is reflected entirely in the overture. While the overture to Le Nozze di Figaro is sparkling in the spirit of the subtitle, La Folle Journée, The Mad Day, the overture to Don Giovanni depicts the alternating aspects of serious mood and comical relief. We begin with an ominous D minor chord in syncopation mirrored by a dominant chord. The idea is extended, flutes and clarinets move from D to A while the strings accompany with a dotted rhythm. The harmony, however, undergoes subtle changes starting with the bass line moving down chromatically. Incidentally, we've seen the use of chromatism in Mozart in the episode dedicated to another prog work, the Symphony K504, curiously, also in the key of D. The line keeps moving down, the color darkened by the entrance of the trumpets and timpani on bar 9, and the syncopations return in the first violins on bar 11. The use of syncopation here creates anxiety and anticipation. And notice the kind of creepy atmosphere that that G sharp creates, even more when it's underlined by a magmatic second violins part. The anxiety increases, stressed by the sforzato. And then the line becomes a succession of highs and lows with continuous dynamic contrasts. Notice also the change of register in the violins, digging deep into their lowest notes. The cut to the allegro could happen here, at the end of bar 22, but Mozart adds an extra layer of anxiety, a chromatic scale topped by upward and downward scales of the flutes and first violins. This idea would be expanded on by Richard Strauss in his Don Quixote. Contrast, again, half a bar in crescendo, half in piano. The tension increases, exploding a few bars later, concluding the introduction and leading into the Molto Allegro. There are quite a few things to keep in mind here. The cut time and the tempo marking indicate a certain pace, not too slow. However, if you go too fast, some details are bound to be missed, like the difference in length between the bass line and everyone else in the second and fourth bar. When transitioning to the Molto Allegro, make sure you're absolutely clear with the violas and cellos. That's the engine. If that's in place, everything else will follow just fine. By the way, for a full technical analysis, you can look up my video on Patreon. The theme begins with the chromatism, what a surprise, and then adds a syncopated element. Only this time, syncopation is not used to create anxiety or tension, but as a propeller. The energy increases, and you can feel the palpitation in the descending eighth notes of the first violins. To which all winds plus timpani answer. The phrase is repeated with a brief flute counterline and we swiftly move into a vortex of notes started by the violins and shortly joined by everyone else. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this opera is all about contrasts. We move into A major with a forte tutti chord, which leaves room immediately to descending scales in piano. 
repeated twice, and Mozart gives us a more gentle moment, oboes and clarinets in thirds and octave apart, sustained by a pedal of horns and repeated notes of the violins. Only the violins, mind you, no violas or cellos, keeping everything very light. But wait, this moment lasts only five bars. A crescendo of the violins brings everyone back, precipitating everything in A minor in a forte dynamic. The phrase ends on the dominant. Is there a second theme coming, perhaps? More gentle and relaxed, or feminine, if you wish? Not quite. What we are faced with are a series of questions and answers. A very assertive question in a very masculine tone while the answer is more feminine, played only by the violins and violas. The strong motive becomes the object of a musical game. First, it echoes in three different stages in the violins, in the couple oboe bassoon and in the flutes. And then it turns into a dialogue between flute and oboe. landing eventually on the end of the first part, which, by the way, reuses that same whirling technique we've seen in bars 46 and following. The development begins with the very same motives. First change. The second time, Mozart moves three notes giving us a heads up on what's about to happen. The game seems to proceed in the same way, with the motive bouncing between woodwinds and strings, but the accompaniment in the woodwinds dialogue is now offered by the second motivic element, which is moving back and forth between the first and second violins. Mozart plays with the mind and ears of the audience with a cascade of oral inputs coming from everywhere. Surprise! The first theme reappears in G major. Briefly, everything is transformed in a modulation that leaves us suspended on an F major chord. And the succession of modulating models using the two motives creates the core of this development. We're led back to an A pedal which concludes the development and eventually takes us back to the recapitulation. That's right, we're basically in a standard sonata form, including a slow introduction and a coda. The coda is where Mozart gives us another surprise. Normally, we would expect this kind of piece to end with fireworks, getting big audience applause after its final chord. However, Mozart here is experimenting, as we've seen right from the introduction. This overture is not just a separate piece meant to tell the audience that the show is about to begin. It's part of the opera. The action has already begun. The story has already started. And Mozart eases us into the next scene with a short coda in a piano dynamic, which is in fact simply a modulating bridge. Thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button right below the video and ring the bell so you will get notified every time a new video comes out. If you want to support the show monetarily, you can do so on my Patreon page and if you're interested in conducting technique, follow my Facebook group. All the links are in the description. Let me know in the comments what you think about this piece and if you have any suggestions for future videos and I look forward to seeing you next week with a new episode of Conducting Pills when we will go through the first part of Mendelssohn's Italian Symphony. In the meanwhile, please continue to enjoy music and be well. Ciao! And move outwards, inwards for the sforzato and piano. Perfect for pitch registration.